Hello guys, welcome back to DP Design, and in this video we will learn about aerodynamics, aerodynamic drag coefficient, and wind tunnel. So, let's get started. Aerodynamics is the field that studies air flows and interactions between air flows and bodies, more specifically, it is a branch of fluid dynamics, along with hydrodynamics and others, it studies phenomena that occur in an airflow, such as the interaction between two or more flows, or the effects of changing some parameters on the flow behavior, as well as phenomena that occur when a body is inserted in an airflow such as the boundary layer vortex. Some fields of study that are included in aerodynamics are aerocoustics, unsteady aerodynamics, computational aerodynamics, experimental aerodynamics, compressible aerodynamics. Aerodynamics is largely applied in projects in aeronautical, aerospace and automotive engineering, but other engineering projects such as, but not limited to, bridges and tall edifications, must take it in account too. Outside engineering. Other areas such as architecture, urbanism, biology and weather studies, also use aerodynamics to properly analyze phenomena. Now, let's begin with the importance of aerodynamics in automotive industry. The first vehicle to break the 100 km per hour barrier was the Jamace Contente, and it was all electric. The year was 1899, the driver of that car was Camille Genazzi, a Belgian, who determined that a streamlined shape was likely to be slipperier than a brick-like design he was bang on, and we'll explain why shortly. Look at the picture. It looks like he's riding a torpedo at highway speeds, most vehicles use around five times as much power to overcome the effects of drag, as they do overcoming things like rolling resistance and weight. This means, the higher your vehicle's CD number, the harder it's having to work to push through the air and keep up with traffic, thus it'll use more fuel. At very low speeds, like 1 to 2 km per hour, wind resistance or drag will be virtually nil, and so there'll be little difference between a sports car and a boxy SUV like the Toyota Land Cruiser 200 series, but as the speed doubles the wind resistance quadruples, meaning its effect will be greater on the less aerodynamic vehicle. What is aerodynamic drag coefficient? The aerodynamic efficiency of a car's shape is measured by its coefficient of drag, generally known as its CD figure. For example, a flat plate held at right angles to the airflow has a CD of 1.25, whereas the most efficient production car shapes at the moment have a CD of about 0.28. However, this CD figure cannot be used by itself to calculate a car's aerodynamic drag because it does not take into account the car's frontal area. The frontal area is the car's total cross-section or the total amount of space it occupies when viewed from the front. A full-size car and a scale model of the same thing would both have the same CD figure, but the larger version would need a lot more power to propel it at speed because its frontal area is larger. For this reason, the important figure is the ta coefficient of drag multiplied by frontal area, which gives the total amount of drag acting on the body. Thus, if you are comparing two cars, you must compare the ta figure rather than the CD. With the emphasis on aerodynamics, car manufacturers try to make each successive model more slippery aerodynamically than the previous one. Taking the Jaguar XJ6 as an example, the CD of the new model is 0.38, compared with 0.44 for the old Series 3. However, the new model has a larger frontal area than the old 122.17 square feet, compared with 21.3 for the older one. Thus the new XJ6 has a ta of 8.42, 0.38x22.17, compared with 9.37 for Series 3. This means that the new Jaguar takes less power to drive it at any particular speed, and on the same power would reach a higher top speed. Why wind tunnels? Car manufacturers use wind tunnels to see how prototypes of their cars behave. In a wind tunnel, the car is anchored down, and a stream of air is blown past it to simulate the conditions that the car would meet when driven forward. The car is connected to instruments that record how much downforce or how much lift is being generated at each end of the car. The flow of air past the car is made visible by attaching small tufts of wool to the car's body, or by blowing a stream of smoke past it. In both cases the path that the wind takes as it flows over the car can be seen by how the wool or smoke behaves. Smoke also shows the behavior of the air in front of and behind the car. Wool and tufts arrange themselves along the lines of the airflow over the body but cannot show the air behavior in front of or behind the car. The model or car in the wind tunnel can be turned round at various angles to the airflow, 
so that the engineers can see how the body shape behaves inside winds. Good airflow means that the car slips through the atmosphere with minimal disturbance while remaining stable. A certain amount of downforce is needed at either end of the body for stability, but any turbulence should ideally happen behind the rear of the car. This also helps to keep it clean. Wind tunnels use a large motor-driven fan to suck a stream of air past a car to simulate driving through still air at speed. The car sits on pressure-sensitive pads in the middle of the tunnel, and a viewing screen in the side of the tunnel allows the engineers to see what is going on. So this is all for this video. We will upload another video with more information, till then do like, share and subscribe our channel. Thank you. Keep sharing, keep learning.